Good morning, viewers. Today we're gonna to take a look at home on Sand Sage Court in Palm Desert. This home is a really nice 1900 and change square foot. The sellers are calling it a four bedroom home. I see it more as three bedrooms in a den, although the den could easily be treated as a fourth bedroom. It does have a three car garage, as you can tell. And this home, I'll tell you, I like this home. It's a good home. It's got some nice improvements to it. A beautiful yard, beautiful front landscaping and rear, nice pool. Um, the kitchen's been upgraded uh, pleasantly. It's, there's really a lot of pluses to this. Very little work to uh, finish it off and make it what I would call move in ready. But some people might, would just like uh, dust the floors and move right in. Uh, this is a nice home. Anyway, let's start as I always do, doing a quick pan in the neighborhood. This is a group of homes that were built in 1988 and 1989 by a company called Lewis Development. All the homes are bigger homes, roughly 1,900 to 2,000 square feet. This is a very quiet section of South Palm Desert, a little bit up the hill. And uh, as I mentioned, at the end of a cul-de-sac. So this is not an area that you're going to get any road noise or stuff like that from it. It's a, it's a secluded little area of Palm Desert. Okay, we're gonna walk inside here and notice, you know, just the nice touches to the landscaping. It's very finished off. Okay, what you have around here, the grass, while a little patchy, that's because of the time of year. Right now, we're about September, uh, it's either 9th or 10th, I can't remember, but we have to reseed out here during this time of year, and it's time for us to do that. So, anyway, it's just a nice little area here. Everything is very well placed. It, obviously they had some sort of a landscape architect when they did this. Uh, Christmas lights still on that tree there because everything is very evenly spaced and uh, the right size for it to come out. There is one tree stump there. They must have had a tree die or it looks like it got very large and was probably going to start pushing that one wall of the house that was close to it. So instead it was simply removed. The stump is obviously still buried there. Good place to put a big uh, Spanish pot, you know, with a, uh, a colorful plant. We're going to go inside. Little things to be fixed. This front door, I don't know how well it shows up, but we can see like chips in the paint and stuff there. Not expensive to do that there. Uh, I would just put some color into the front door and give it a big wow factor again. So uh, for a couple of hours time and the cost of a pint of paint, that door could have a lot of sizzle. Look at the tile work inside. Here you come into a front area where it's inlaid with tile, giving you a nice little um, interior doorstep. And then the main parts of the house are all either tiled or has wood through it. And that does not look like the cheap uh, Costco, you know, imitation type wood. That looks like a better quality. Now, in the living room area, there is carpeting. Probably want to change it out. You can see the stains there in it. Might be able to be... Uh, uh, steam cleaned in order to make it. It does not look like it has been steam cleaned and I was told that there was a tenant in here until just recently. So while the house has had some bare minimal cleaning done to it, nothing substantial. Uh, the few items of furniture that will come across I've been told can go with the home. So we'll point those out like that mirror and that chair there as we come through it. Nice chandelier hanging here in what would be a dining room area. That's an obvious spot for a dining room. Here you got a little pasture window. There's a couple of these through the home. Okay, that goes into the kitchen. We'll see more of that in a little bit. That's a little window where you can just hand a drink or a pass the mashed potatoes, please, while you're sitting around the dining room table out here. Nice views out from the uh, front window. You are looking into the cul-de-sac area, so you do pick up, you know, the neighbor's houses, but they're all very nice houses. And in the distance, you'll see mountains over there. It's kind of hazy and cloudy today, so they aren't as sharp as they would be on a normal day. It's a very humid day here in the desert in uh, the second week of September. My glasses have even fogged up a few times. We're going to do a quick look here at the den, or what's being called the third bedroom in the house. As I mentioned earlier, the wood floor is through it. Now you can see the ceiling fan. There is a sliding closet here. So this would, you know, would qualify as a bedroom. That's about a, a six or seven feet of closet there what's uh, going on. Notice that you have the high ceilings here. That's probably a 10 foot ceiling sloping down to about an eight and a half foot ceiling. There is molding all around uh, the ceiling in the home. Again, nice views on the windows up here. I lifted the blinds up earlier, but uh, they're nice blinds. Okay. This kind of, uh, I don't know, French uh, 
verticals. No, that's not the right word for them. Pin cushion. Uh, I've heard a phrase for those. I can't remember what it is. But to me, this here, while it could be a bedroom, this would be a nice area for an office. You have several different wall plugs scattered around. It would be a good place for a fold-out sofa. Okay, for somewhere to sit, a second TV room maybe. Um, probably if it were me in office. Now, here we do have it sharing a uh, kind of a Jack and Jill bathroom. Nice tile work done through it. Um, a little bit of dated countertops, but clean, functional. Probably would not have to replace those. A huge mirror, okay, for this size bathroom. It's about a five or a six foot wall of mirrors. Hey, there's a good looking guy. Nice to see you again. And then over here behind you, it's kind of hidden behind the doors, but a shower. Okay, so it is a three quarters bath, okay, that's in here. Okay, a fully functioning bathroom. There you go. Now, rather than go out the door this way, into the hall let's go back over here so we can keep on pace with how we're walking through the house we just come in through the front door turn back around let's continue on towards the uh, main living room area i mean it's you need a little bit of reassembly with this fireplace area at least cleaning up i see a lot of wires there hanging and stuff from the removal of a tv that was in there but uh i would possibly even leave that leave that and just buy the proper size TV. That looks like about a 44 or 48 inch TV hole right there, which is plenty big enough for a room this size and use the existing setup to just make sure all of the equipment worked. If that were done, this would be nice. Now, some of the um, tile or not tile, but stonework needs to be repositioned in here. Okay, to really bring a finished look to this. But that's not an expensive thing to deal with. Okay, that could easily be done. You've got a nice little fireplace down here. Again, surrounded by a wood hearth over it. Um, continue on with the ceilings. You've got that finished uh, molding up around the top, a layer up top there where you could put plants or such, just like you see. There's a wet bar area here. Um, I always find these wet bars a little funny because you got the kitchen right over here. So why do I need a wet bar? But some people might like that. It's a good place if you were hosting an event to put out the uh, drinks and everything like that there and still leave the kitchen alone. The tile work from the front continues all through this room, okay? Even into what would be a little dining nook here in this section, just room enough for maybe a four top table or a narrow six. Uh, we have a uh, stainless steel fridge that's left in here. I do notice, I don't know if you can spot it or not, but a couple of dings right there on it but other than that see if i can get those to show up there we go okay but other than that probably a nice fridge it's a maytag you know so it's a known brand double door with that kind of pull out um freezer drawer there i like the uh, stove top here i don't know if you can hear it but there's a fire alarm buzzing in the background here i like the stove top that's done here and the top of the counter here and nice place if you want to put a couple of bar stools Okay, so that people could sit and talk to the cooks. Uh, the dishwasher, again, now that's a KitchenAid, but stainless steel matching the fridge. I like the uh, open cupboards here in this area with closed cupboards, kind of a combination of closed and open cupboards. Enough room there for the pantry items, okay? Extra drawers and double, double dutch ovens, okay? KitchenAid appliances again. I This is a very functioning kitchen. And then extra doors over here by the stovetop where you would put your pots and pans and your tongs and ladles and uh, stir, stirring wooden spoons and all that kind of stuff that would go with it. And you get great views as a cook. The nice part about this area is that if you've got something going on, you're still a part of the party, okay? So you've got the, the pool out there with the... Uh, with the waterfall area, which we'll get to later on it, but it's a nice backyard. You got good views from here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a patio awning out there. So you've got shaded area inside the house. For those of us who use our homes out here quite a bit, especially in the summer month, we really appreciate that. Okay, so, oh, recess lights throughout the room too. And here you have a nice kind of, uh, what kind of window would you call that? Where it's got a circular top on it. A unique window, definitely. And it's nice. Anyways. There we go, we've seen the uh, living room, the dining room, the kitchen, love it all. What's here, I would keep, honestly, if this were mine, it'd be a uh, 
repaint, maybe not even repaint the whole things, but just find the walls that need it because some of them are going to have a little bit of damage, okay, from uh, stuff in the wall or where there's nails in it. If I could use existing nails and not repaint every wall, I would probably just find myself an additional coffee color or two and do accent walls throughout this home. There we've got the furnace. Looks okay. I'm going to say not even a lot of tape up on stuff. It must be pretty well put together. Not a dirty area. Um, it's gas, which is good to see. Helps cut down the electric bills. We're going to follow the tile from the main areas. Past that bathroom again, which we've already explored. And go this way here. Turn right. We're going to go into the carpeted area of the master bedroom. A little bit of dirt on the carpet as the main walkway areas, but as I mentioned, there was a tenant in here. The place has not been cleaned up, so what's here could probably be steam cleaned. This is some of the leftover furniture. Okay, a nice big dresser drawers. Okay, that's there. There's that good looking guy again. Okay, and then you got some tile in here so that if you came in from the back patio where maybe you went at night and used the jacuzzi, you would come in, not step on the carpet, but be on tile, and then go over into the bathroom. This would be where your bed would be, where the remains of a former bed is here. Again, probably stuff that they prefer to keep to keep here. That looks like it needs a little something. Oh, it's paint. That can be cleaned off. Okay, good. Good to know. Okay. Um, ceiling fans, by the way, still in the room. Bada bing. Uh, in the master bedroom, you have a really good sized closet. This is probably about six feet deep by seven feet wide. Lots of room there. You got the tall hangers over here for the ladies' dresses, okay, and the long coats. You've got several shelving areas there where you could put hats and shoes, okay, and then over here you've got the double area. Uh, well, the top area is for hanging. The bottom, I don't see a hanger there, although it could have one easy enough. I would probably have one for slacks up there and jackets above, but a very nice orchestrated cl closet in here. Okay, and a, uh, a door. Look at that, with an extra little mini rack on it. As I mentioned, good home. I, I would not go into this home thinking that I'm going to be changing a bunch of things. Just maybe finishing off some stuff that has gotten uh, just slightly worn throughout the decades. Master shower. This area has obviously been redone and not a super long time ago. I see a little bit of uh, water drainage mark around the, around the drain there, probably from the calcium deposits of the water. But this is a beautiful shower. It's an open shower, as you can tell. Okay, so you've got a great big rain shower head right up there with the controls underneath, two cubby holes, okay, to put your shampoo or soap. Um, I think that it might be spraying a little bit into the tub here, but maybe I'm wrong. But with the shower angle more downward, it could be fine. But what a nice tub. This is a tub that's definitely built for two, maybe even three if that's what you're into. And it's got jacuzzi jets on it, okay? A nice big uh, faucet coming into it. You got the controls for the jet right here. Well laid out around it with plenty of room to put your glass of wine or your candles or whatever you'd like. And just enough of the backyard to not destroy your privacy, but to make it a real meaningful experience. Over here, if we go to the left, we have a double vanity sink with a uh, medicine chest cabinet there, a long mirror, probably about seven, eight feet long a mirror. You got the lights up over the top done with a, a nice lighting fixture. Again, one of those half circle light fixtures. Lots of cabinets and drawers down below. Plenty of room for toothbrush, scope mouse, wash, whatever you want without clogging up your countertop if you don't want to. The towel racks are ample in here. And then you have a private chamber for the toilet, okay? So uh, with it, its own uh, uh, vent uh, built in there. A couple of more towel racks out here. Okay, and room up top where if you want to put some decorative plants hanging around just for ambiance. Nice bathroom. Don't need to change it. I don't think I saw anything in there that I said I would have to change or fix. I'd just clean it. That's it. Clean it and move in. Over here on this side, we're coming to one of the first guest bedrooms. Decent sized bedroom, okay. Again, another ceiling fan that's installed over here. You've got a TV, uh, whatever those things are called. I can't think of the name right now. And the carpeting in this room looks okay. I mean, I can see a little bit of path here where uh, the initial walking in, I can see around the frame of what was probably the bed. Maybe there was a, uh, a footstool or something there at that end of the bed. 
I can see some of the uh, some of the floorboards need to be repainted okay in places around it but all in all a good bedroom well I like how they did kind of that uh, different color stripe up near the top that one might be the second color that I look through the rest of the home for um, maybe my second coffee color okay for the walls although really I kind of think of a brown so anyways your choice it's your house not mine uh, this year we go into a Jack and Jill bath you got nice tile on the floors really good uh, cabinets there not super expensive but still nice dark stained wood and brown um, the you know, got a, a bug in the sink but uh, got a nice countertop again a little bit dated the faucets I can tell a bit updated on it about a five to six foot mirror here with plenty of lights over the top it's like ooh, it's really getting me I think somebody tall must have lived in here all the cabinets are put like at my shoulder height and I'm five foot six so um, but definitely working you know, and it does leave room below here that if you want to put a toothpaste holder or something like that or toothbrush holder I mean or another towel rack you could do it here you've got the toilet sharing an area with a shower um, let's see how the shower is oh you got like a safety bar here you know for the old folks if they need something to grab onto when they come inside and uh, just a decent shower okay it's a uh, no actually that's it's been tiled it's a pan kind of a some sort of a kit pan that's put into the bottom real tile work along the along the side up above the height of the shower head okay there you go tile work in nature very uniform with the colors and the tile and stuff that have been done through the house second guest bedroom here again carpeting inside a little bit of residue from where the furniture was and in the general walking path another ceiling fan seems like there's a ceiling fan in every room of significance in this house a well-equipped closet it does need a a oh i guess to use this i was gonna say it needs a hanging rack but no i can see down there what am i thinking so that's got a that a shelf built in that kind of matches the house again the floorboards around kind of a little gap and that one there i'd probably just take a little putty and run it up through that to join that together better doesn't need to be replaced just needs to have a, a, a little bit of caulking that's the word i'm looking at a little bit of caulking put in nice room though okay again walls are not filthy in this house um i'm not sure it needs a repaint i mean as often as possible if you could work with the existing paint job you would be happy in here there's only been a few spots that i pointed out that need to be repainted you know of course some people are going to want to do it no matter what here in the uh, laundry area it looks like oh wait we do have gas there it is right down there we also have 220 volt for the dryer so you could have gas or electric dryer you've got a vent built right into the wall which is nice your uh, hot and cold water and the drainage okay for uh, for the washing machine a little bit of sink here okay if you needed that for anything I know that I'd probably be doing that all the time and there would become where I put my laundry basket as I loaded it into the machines you got a uh, well-sized um, uh, storage space up here for all your laundry detergents and stuff probably use that a little bit as a uh, backup linen closet but then I say that and then over here in the hall there is the official linen closet so you just have good storage space mm -hmm. now over here that door I see something that's been done here at the bottom maybe they had a little doggy door there or something maybe they had like a chihuahua sized dog in here once upon a time I, I don't smell any dog in the house so if they did it sure wasn't a bad one you know maybe a doggy door that's kind of what it looks like from this side. but for a very small dog or a cat they were obviously very clean about it because as I said there's no smell here on this side okay oh almost locked myself out let's undo that okay good size hot water heater okay that's a bigger than normal hot water heater a little bit dated on it just by looking at it I'm not sure when it was manufactured uh, probably still working excellent though hot water heaters last a long long time it is gas okay as you can see coming up here and then this would be your sprinkler controls okay for the yard um, good amount of storage space here well actually I shouldn't say good a couple of cabinets okay for storage space it looks like you've got place over here for uh, putting shovels and stuff like that more place for things to hang over here up over the top okay some things already built in and this part 
This is probably the remains of a former kitchen before they put the existing one in. That's what it looks like. A nice place there to hang some tools, okay? A nice little uh, uh, storage rack there, the mobile one. Over on this side, you have somebody's real workbench area. There's even a few tools that are left over. Um, somebody was probably into air tools. That looks like a big air compressor right there. Boy, if there was somebody here who was really into doing shop type work, they would probably appreciate that. Over here on this side, uh, an even older set of cabinets that looks like it carries the worst of uh, the remains of uh, former glories of fixing things. I can see some cables, you know, in there and stuff like that. Oh well, don't need to go through there. But three car garage, okay. You have two garage doors, one for a single car, one for a double car right here. You could rework all this stuff, keep what you want, throw out what you don't, still have plenty of room left over for storage for the things that are really important to you. And there you have it. That's the garage. Okay, let's go back through here. I want to explore the backyard. We could have gone through a door over on that side, but the sun, I know, was going to blind the camera. So we're going to go back through the house. We're going through the central hallway, okay, towards the living room, okay, dining room area, which are here as we came through the front door. This way here, that beautiful kitchen, okay, right up over here, and then on this side here, the TV area and the wet bar. So this is where, if you had guests over, you'd spend most of your time, and then you would spill onto the back patio. This back patio runs the length of the back of the house. I mean, it is probably, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40 to 45 feet long, okay, about 15 feet wide, 12 to 15 feet wide, Okay, it's in good condition. This is not rotting away or anything. You may want to repaint it at some time in the near future, but uh, it, it doesn't have to be the first priority when you move in because it's in decent shape. Um, looks like they had something hanging up over here on, on that there. But then just stuff, I mean, hang a towel up or something so that when you get out of the jacuzzi at night, you've already got a towel here on the outside hanging easy to go. And then you go into your master bedroom and, uh, you know, turn on... Uh, Nightline or uh, Jimmy Fallon or something. The uh, pool looks like it could use some recovering. I don't know if you can see that all because I do. It, the water is clear, so the equipment must be working. The bottom of the pool, I can see chips in the uh, in in the. Gosh, sometimes I just can't think of words. I can see chips in the plaster. That's the word. Okay, and it must be a blue tinge plaster. The water has a slight blue look to it. Okay, over on this side, kind of the same thing on the steps. Uh, nothing that would stop you from getting in the pool immediately. I mean, if it were summertime and I was here in the middle of the day, I'd probably just jump right in. The pool doesn't look super deep. It probably gets to somewhere between about five and six feet. They're at the deepest part. Widens up good. This is a pool that could easily have a dozen people in it and you wouldn't be bumping elbows. And it's obviously got a waterfall feature that emanates from somewhere over here because the rocks and stuff have water stains on them from where it is and then it comes out as a matter of fact these hoses that kind of pop out in different spots can probably be positioned to maximize the waterfall effect nice nice and as you look back at the house plenty of room for a fun time to be had by all the roof looks like it's in good shape up top it's a uh, kind of a red tile uh, Spanish red tile this has a stucco facing on the house um, notice the plants, really good use of color and assortment. The plants are evenly spaced. They have great color thrown in the mix of it. This is already a beautiful backyard. And personally, I can tell that it's only been kept up at a minimum level by the gardeners. Over on this side, you have a big lawn, plenty of room. This is above average size lot. I can't remember the size, but uh, probably somewhere in the 11 to 13,000 square feet. And over there, you've got a little bit of leftover, your pool equipment and stuff like that on in a little storage shed. Um, the air conditioner looks a little dated over there, but probably functioning well. Okay, this is a, a lawn area that's definitely big enough that if you wanted to host a croquet, croquet game, if you wanted to uh, throw a football around with your son, uh, if the girls wanted to pretend to be Olympic gymnasts or whatever, it could definitely be done. You know, I don't know how long I've been on this video, but I've probably gone way over. Oh my goodness, I'm looking at 24 minutes. I better call this quits. Let's uh, stop right here. This was a lot of house, and it took a lot of exploring. So, 
My name is Eric Meats. I want to thank you for your time looking at this home today on Sand Sage. You all have a good day. Bye-bye.